Welcome to episode 8 of the Oregon Family Law Guy podcast. I'm the Oregon Family Law Guy, Hansery LaForest, and as always, we are seeking to empower Oregonians everywhere by discussing the ins and outs of Oregon family law. Today is Thursday, August 23rd. Uh, the weather is a bit cooler today, which is a welcome respite. We've been, as I mentioned before in the previous podcast, yo-yoing back and forth between mid and upper 90s to 80s, but today we had a pretty nice spell. Uh, we got into the 80s, I think it was 70s most of the day. Um, so it's a nice change of pace. I think that the weather is turning. It's been a pretty hot summer um, from what I understand, so it's uh, a welcome change of pace to have the weather cool down a little bit. We've also had to deal with a little bit of smoke uh, from a lot of these West Coast fires, and uh, for some of you folks listening, it's it's been really bad out in California. I know we've had a couple fires uh, in the interior of Oregon. Um, hopefully, uh, it hasn't affected anyone uh, personally that's that's been listening. And if it has affected you or your loved ones, uh, we'll certainly keep you in our thoughts. Anyway, some housekeeping items. Uh, one announcement that I want to make off the top of the bat is that it's official. I am now an attorney licensed to practice in Oregon. Uh, for those of you um, who have been listening since, or who haven't been listening uh, since episode one, I have just recently moved here to the state of Oregon. Uh, I was a practicing attorney uh, for the past seven years. I practiced for about uh, three years in New York as a criminal prosecutor, uh, made my way into the private practice when I moved out to Texas, uh, and for the past four years I've been doing uh, family law uh, in addition to um, a little bit of criminal law as well as commercial uh, transactional work as well. Um, I moved up to Oregon, uh, not to repeat the story, but I moved up to Oregon because uh, my wife is a resident uh, at OHSU, which is the hospital nearby. So that's what brought me up to Oregon. Uh, I currently work as an associate attorney with the law office of Mark Kramer and Associates. That's uh, up in Portland, uh, the downtown Portland area. Um, so it's, it's welcome news. It's great news. Uh, and I'm uh, ready to serve uh, the state of Oregon. Now, here's what I want to make clear. Does this mean that I'm now allowed to give legal advice on this podcast? Uh, no, first of all, uh, I can't give legal advice on a podcast, uh, and I won't give legal advice on a podcast. And the reason why is because it's impossible. Um, uh, you can't give legal advice unless you know what the facts are of a particular situation or a particular case or a particular matter are and the reality is is that without knowing uh, exactly what you're going through whether it's uh, some sort of dissolution or divorce or uh, child custody uh, or child support uh, situation really uh, no attorney uh, regardless of how good that attorney is, uh, can give competent legal advice without knowing those things. Uh, what you can do uh, with a podcast uh, and what I hope is and what my vision is for this podcast uh, and some of the explainer videos that I'm putting out and that I continue to put out is to just provide some education, provide some resources. There are a lot of people who just have general questions about the way family law works, the way this process works, who you know, they're in this process for the first time and they've got more questions than answers. And uh, if I could provide at least some some helpful guideposts on that, uh, I, I think that's the way that you should use uh, this particular podcast. Uh, so um, I just want to have you folks keep that in the back of your mind. Um, this isn't legal advice, uh, but certainly it's uh, information that I hope will put you uh, in the right direction in terms of being able to educate yourselves on Oregon Um If there ever comes a time where you're listening to an episode, you're listening to me, um, and you have general questions about something that I said or something that I didn't say, uh, or um, you just have general questions for me, um, and, and this may be general or more, even more specific questions for me, uh, reach out to me. Um, feel free to you know reach out on Facebook, reach out uh, on YouTube, um, reach out, uh, on the website. Um, you know, I have the contact information, 
uh, for the office posted. Uh, ask me uh, if you want to take a conversation offline and we can discuss your particular matter. Um, so with all that being said, let's get into the topic of today's conversation. And we're doing something a little bit different in this episode. Uh, what we're asking today is, do you need an attorney uh, in family law um, in Oregon? Okay, and we're going to discuss the pros and cons of this. All right, um, it's a question that um, I've thought about today when I was in the courthouse in Multnomah uh, County Court, and uh, there was an individual that I had seen um, in Clackamas, and, and we were talking about um, his particular legal situation. And so um, he's going about it alone, and so I decided to dedicate today's episode to just talk about uh, specifically and spe specifically to talk to those people that are going about it alone, uh, and 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 some of the things to keep in the back of your mind. First of all, you do not need an attorney uh, in family law, okay, unless you're dealing with a matter that has criminal consequences. And in the context of family law, what that's going to be is when you're brought up on a criminal contempt proceeding for violating some sort of court order, okay? That's the type of situation uh, where you're probably going to, it's probably going to be necessary uh, for you to have um, an attorney. Um, oftentimes, a court will admonish you on those things. Certainly, you know, even in a criminal law setting, you, you don't really need an attorney, but it's oftentimes advised that you get one uh, because there are criminal uh, consequences uh, depending on, you know, if you are actually found to be in contempt of court for violating a court order. Hopefully, none of you are in that situation, uh, but that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. Now, why would you want an attorney, though, if, you know, for, if there, it is the case that you, you don't need um, an attorney for a family law proceeding? Well, there could be a couple of different reasons. Number one, just pure time, right? And the idea here is simple. Filing and serving a petition, uh, filing, filling out that paperwork, submitting that paperwork, educating yourself on not just, you know, the, the laws and the statutes that govern family law, uh, but also uh, the protocols within a court, how to file something in court. Um, that takes time. That can be cumbersome. Uh, and a lot of those rules uh, are not really that obvious. You think it would be as simple as submitting an application and depending on what your exact particular need is it may be um it, it, it may be simple but you know, oftentimes it's not uh and so having an expert an attorney who can show you how to do that that can be good and that could save you a lot of time a lot of stress having to go through um you know a lot of the self-help guys that you'll find uh online or in the courthouse also accuracy um you know oftentimes if you submit something incorrectly what will happen is it'll bounce back and oftentimes the courts are not forgiving on pro se and by pro se i mean individuals who decide to be unrepresented they're not forgiving on pro se litigants they'll treat you as if it's an attorney um and you know if you submit a petition if you submit some sort of motion to try to get that argued in front of the judge sometimes it'll bounce back now maybe you'll find some helpful court staff that'll help you out in terms of filling out the paperwork that you need uh, but oftentimes court staff they're also uh, instructed uh, not to give legal advice and if you're asking a question on how you should fill out something to persuasively argue your point uh, in court uh, you'll often get, you know, hey, I'm not an attorney. If you have a question about that, you probably should reach out to an attorney. Um, so, you know, accuracy is is another reason uh, why you'll want to have an attorney. Also, it depends on the nature of your case, too. If you're going through a simple dissolution where, and by simple dissolution, I, I'm, I'm talking about a divorce in which maybe there's not any kids. Uh, maybe there's not a whole lot of assets between the two of you. You may have a car your spouse may have a car um and and really that's you know there's no real property that's all you're dividing maybe that you can come to some sort of agreement and maybe you could do it alone but for a case in which you've got a lot of assets you've got a business you've got a lot of property uh maybe a couple of accounts retirement accounts uh insurance policies uh things of that nature 
those are complicated cases. And especially when you don't have an agreement with the other party, um, being able to have someone guide you through uh, just the paperwork that you need to submit, uh, just the things and the way that you want to structure uh, either a settlement agreement uh, to um, properly dissolve the marriage, or if there's no settlement agreement, properly contest and defend your rights may be useful in that sort of situation. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a situation where there's property involved. If we're talk talking about child custody and child care, if you've got a lot of children and there's um, a significant issue about child support, uh, that may also be a situation where you want um, to have an attorney properly look over some of the work that you have. If the child's in danger, you certainly want to make sure that you you have the ability to go in court as soon as possible and bring that to a court's attention so that they can do something about it. And, you know, you could certainly do it on your own, but, you know, having an attorney there may also help you. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to make it a plug for attorneys. What I tell people usually is, especially if they stroll into my office with, um, you know, a relatively easy case, I could say, like, listen, you may not need an attorney to do this you in fact you don't need an attorney to do this and i tell people all the time if you could do it without the attorney and, and save yourself a couple bucks you know why wouldn't you do that i think that's something that's that would be very helpful in a lot of different cases okay um because you know this goes into the cons of it right like money is the is one of the biggest issues you know an attorney can be costly not all the time but but oftentimes it can be costly. And so if you could do something yourself, you know, and, and avoid having an attorney, especially if you have a case or a situation or a matter that's not that complex, I highly encourage you go out, do it yourself, figure it out. You know, there's plenty of self-help resources online. Um, you know, that may be the best way to sort of go. Um, you know, so that's, that's probably the biggest downside. Uh, also, uh, you know, just familiarity with your case. Um, you know, you yourself are the one that knows your case and knows your circumstances. And in the case of a divorce, knows your spouse the best. You know your family the best. You know your children the best. Uh, and so in a situation where you've got a simple case uh, and you've got an idea of how you want to structure that divorce and the other person or spouse perhaps agrees with you, it might be worth it to take a shot at doing it on your own. Uh, and so I think that's something that's highly encouraged. And I, in fact, I encourage it all the time. If you are in a position, okay, where um, you want to pick an attorney or you want to select an attorney, uh, because either because you're you're just not comfortable doing it on your own or you just don't have the time, um, you know, there are a couple things that you need to keep in mind. And I think the overall theme about picking an attorney is making sure that you're comfortable okay you need to be able to pick someone who takes the time to understand exactly what's going on not every single family law case is alike there are different families there are different people um, there are different circumstances involving your property and your marital assets uh, and or your debt uh, and having someone that's going to really take the time and get into uh, the guts of the situation that you're dealing with uh, that's something that's that, that that's going to pay for itself. Uh, and so, you know, I highly encourage you as you go about and you reach out and you try to contact attorneys to do consultations, uh, see if you can find someone that can take the time to understand exactly what's going on. Also, you want to be able to pick an attorney that's going to, you know, basically not sell you a pipe dream and, and give it to you straight. And here's the reason why. A lot of people don't know the way family law works. A lot of people are going to stroll in and they're going to have an idea of what they want to do. Okay. But, all right, you need to have someone to be able to sit back and tell you, you know, whether or not what you're asking for is feasible. If you're in a situation where you're in a highly contentious uh, separation or dissolution of a marriage and you've got limited funds fighting over the last set of forks or the last set of personal property is probably not going to be the best use of your financial resources, your limited financial resources. Having an attorney or having an advocate that's going to be able to explain to you that, hey, I, I can argue this for you. Uh, I can put forth this position. Um, but that's also going to be something that's going to cost 
not just in terms of finances, but also in terms of time. And that's going to be useful. That's going to pay for itself. Um, also, someone who's going to explain um, the realistic opportunity or the realistic chance that you have to do something like arrange for a new and unique child parenting time schedule. Or perhaps if you're arguing for custody, uh, give you an idea of your chances of getting sole custody or full custody. Um, you want an attorney that's going to be able to explain those things to you. Now, you may not necessarily um, agree or, or, you know, actually hear what you want to hear. Uh, but I think that the idea of having someone that's going to explain to you um, the in a truthful manner, uh, the ups and downs of your case, um, you know, the merits and demerits of your, your case and your position and what you can realistically expect in a court of law is probably something that's going to, again, as I say, pay for itself. Um, so I think that, you know, again, someone who isn't going to sell you a pipe dream, tell you realistically what you can expect in court, that's going to be something that, that pays off for itself. So finally, I want to leave you with the idea of what to look for uh, in, in fees. And I'm just going to describe you know, how attorneys charge. Generally speaking, you're going to charge in one of two methods. You're going to find an attorney who's going to charge by the hour. And that's what we call a billable hour. Okay. Or someone who's going to charge a flat fee. What's a billable hour? Okay. A billable hour is for every hour that's worked. Okay, an attorney is going to charge you a particular rate and the rates can vary depending on the experience uh, of, of that attorney. You know, there are some attorneys that charge maybe junior attorneys 250 or 225 an hour. Uh, there are some attorneys who are more experienced, more seasoned, have uh, had, you know, uh, a measure of success. You know, they charge a higher, maybe 300, 350. 400 it, it keeps on going depending on the level of expertise of that attorney and the complexity of your case um, that's one way to charge for services and generally speaking when you have a billable hour that attorney is going to explain to you what he or she estimates uh, the amount of time uh, that is going to take to resolve your case so they'll say something to the effect of just like hey I charge at let's say $300 an hour um, I estimate that your case is going to take a maximum of 10 hours. Now, does that mean that you're going to have to pay $3,000? No, there are some times where uh, an attorney will finish your case, uh, you know, well before that point is reached, which is great. There, there's a windfall there. Uh, there are also other times where a uh, case becomes more complex. Maybe the other side or the other party is particularly um um, vexatious and they want to just go ahead and they just want to litigate everything at that point what a good attorney is going to do is before they hit that mark they're going to tell you hey you know we're approaching upon the the amount of hours I told you that we're hitting um, you know and they're going to have another conversation with you about how to proceed uh, so in other words the biggest thing that you want to keep in mind in this particular case if you have an attorney that charges uh, by the hour is setting out realistic expectations of how long each part of the case is going to last so that's billable hour then you have uh, attorneys that charge on a flat fee basis um, this is also something that attorneys do um, I've seen from my experience that flat fee is kind of harder to come by um, unless the case is a dis involves a discrete task that the attorney is going to do. So in other words, if what you have is an uncontested divorce where you and the other party basically agree uh, in the way that you're going to divide any assets or any debt, or there are no real assets or, or high value assets, you have no children, and it's an uncontested, you already have the agreement. Well, that's the type of case where an attorney may want to take it on a flat fee because he or she will know um, exactly how long the case will last, which in, in certain uncontested cases is not long. They'll be able to give you a realistic estimate of how many hours it's going to take, and they'll just charge you a flat fee for that. Uh, so that's another way that you could charge it. 
Uh, a third sort of hybrid uh, consideration for those that can't afford a billable hour or flat fee for, for whatever it is, is limited scope representation. And this is where uh, an attorney will represent you, perhaps not for the entirety of the case, for the entirety of the dissolution process or the entirety of the uh, child custody matter, but for a discrete, specific task on that case. So maybe you want, you know, just someone to help you file the paperwork just to get started and you yourself can represent yourself in court. Maybe that's all that you can afford. Well, an attorney that provides a limited scope representation will be able to charge you, you know, perhaps a, a small fee just for, um, you know, representing you uh, for the purposes of, of filing that paperwork. Or maybe it's the other way around. Instead of filing the paperwork, you're fine with filing your own paperwork, but you just need an attorney that's going to represent you in court. Well, you can also have an attorney that provides limited scope representation. Perhaps you file the paperwork, but you come back and have that attorney uh, stand up on your behalf and argue uh, in court on your behalf. Or maybe you'll have an attorney that does, but that's the, ex the extent of it, and they'll charge you a flat fee as a result. Limited scope representations oftentimes provide flexibility um, for an attorney to help a person out get a case started or get a case off the ground or, or help with a specific issue, uh, while at the same time keeping it affordable, keeping it cost effective uh, for folks um, that are in that uh, situation. Um, so just keep that in mind. You know, there are ways um, to charge uh, for legal work um, that can allow you, depending on what you want to do, if you do want to go the path of hiring an attorney to represent you, that can allow you to get representation in a manner that's um, that works best for you, whether it's the billable hour, the flat fee, or limited scope representation, uh, you can get an attorney. It's just a matter of finding the right one. And with that, uh, that concludes episode eight of the Oregon Family Law Guy. Uh, just a couple of quick reminders. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. We are up on YouTube. We are up on iTunes. We are up on Facebook. Uh, and we also have the website. Uh, I want to know what you as Oregonians are thinking. I want to know what's out there. Did I answer your question? Do you have more questions about what I have? Um, am I putting out good episodes? Uh, do you think that I suck? I want to hear all of it. Good, bad, ugly, no matter what. Um, so like, comment, su subscribe. You can find us at OregonFamilyLawGuy.com. Um, please make sure you reach out uh, and let us know how we're doing. Uh, that concludes uh, Episode 8 of the Oregon Family Law Guy.